Hey guys, welcome back to Ravenhawk Tech. In this video, we're going to be covering the installation of Proxmox VE 5.2 in my VMware environment. We're going to start off by giving it a name, Proxmox 01. Going to check the guest OS family to Linux, and let's find Debian 9 64-bit in this list. All right, hit next. I only have one data store, so we can hit next. All right, we're going to make some changes here. First, I'm going to set the gigs here to 8. I'm going to go ahead and increase the hard drive as well. I'm going to set the CPU to 2 cores. And we need to go ahead and make sure to expose the hardware assisted virtualization. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and increase this to 4. Sorry. There. All right. Now we're going to go ahead and expose the hardware assisted virtualization to the guest OS and enabling virtualization CPU performance counters. We're going to need to make sure to go to the CPU MMU virtualization and set to hardware CPU and MMU. Now I'm going to delete the USB 2.0. I don't really need it. And I'm going to also set my DMZ to my home or my network to my home network. And go ahead and uh, yeah, connect to my ISO. I can't talk today. I can't talk any day. What am I talking about? Hit next. Hit finish. Okay, once it shows up, you can go ahead and power on the system. and then connect uh, to the VM through the console choice. I usually do just a new tab. Okay. <clears throat> now there's very basic configuration options. You don't really get to choose much during the installation. So if you are planning on doing a custom install, there is a video I would recommend, which I did earlier on how to do a custom install. It is on Debian 8, but that makes no difference because you can install on Debian 9 pretty much the same way. Uh, for example, what you do is, let's look at the hard drive options. Right now I only have one hard drive and I can only do these options. So it <clears throat> doesn't give me much to work with. Go ahead and hit install or next. I'm going to put New York because I'm in Georgia. That makes sense, but I'm in the Eastern time zone. Hit next. Okay, I'm going to put my password in and then confirm it. And then an email address. Okay, hit next. All right, I'm going to go ahead and choose my host name, which I'm just going to keep it PVE, and then do it at bakatech.net, which is my internal domain. Going to change the IP address to end in 240 or 244, because I already have a Hyper-V on 243. Going to change my DNS to my DC, which is going to be 239, and hit next. All right, and then just pretty much let it go. All right, now we're going to go ahead and just reboot the system here. And I'm going to go ahead and disconnect the media. So what you'd end up doing is you would just go back to your vCenter, or your, your ESXi box in this case, right-click, 
go down to edit settings takes a second go ahead and change that I just use it back to the host VM or host device excuse me and then just tell it yes to override and there we go we're booted up now we're gonna go to HTTPS 192.168.1.244 uh, colon 8006 which is my server so it would basically be your IP address colon 8006 you're gonna get a prompt for the fact that you're using a self-signed certificate just go ahead and proceed and then once you log in you're gonna put your root username and your password that you set up during the install now you will get a prompt uh, that's because this is a, uh, you don't have a subscription you can always get one that's just to give you additional support all features work on the system without actually paying for it now you can create a VM and you get your basic settings which you'll get some of those additional tabs as you go forth because it needs certain fields to be fit uh, set excuse me and that's it guys we pretty much got everything set thank you Goodbye.